The new VDA 5050 version 3.0 is about to be published. And we received so many questions from the Automation Awakenings community that we decided to dedicate a full episode on that topic. So stay with us and learn together with me. Automation Awakenings, your weekly dose of best practices for logistics automation. Welcome back to the next episode of the Automation Awakenings podcast. And I welcome our expert today about the VDA 5050 topic, Matthias Koblitz. Yeah, Oli, uh, thanks uh, for having me. So to say, uh, I, I hope I can live up to the, to the expert, uh, expert badge um, that you just awarded to me, but let's see. So I think uh, what is clear, we have this new version of the standard coming up. Um, there's a certain uh, range of, of features and new functions that will be available with it. And I'm now really curious to hear the questions that, uh, that Oli collected. I hope you are ready to be grilled um, <laughs> by our community. Um, let's directly start with the easy one okay, okay let's go warm up so video 50 50 mm. why is that important what what does it why does it matter yeah so vda 50 50 is a communication standard that um is uh, is applied by agvs and amrs and it's been developed by the vda and the vdma um, which are two working groups or which have two working groups to make sure that we can orchestrate different AGV or AMR fleets on the same shop floor. So if you have two different AGV providers driving around, they wouldn't see each other as per today. So we need a central fleet manager that is orchestrating those two fleets and it's doing that by having those individual AGVs connected via VDA 5050. Okay, and the current version that is already available is the version 2.1. And right. before we go to the newest uh, version, first of all, um, can you summarize quickly, if it's possible, what is the scope of the current version? Well, the version 2.0 is the most widely adopted version at the moment. We have still some applications that are on lower uh, versions or previous versions. Um, in version 2.0, we had some, 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 some major changes. We, for example, have now a corridors that can be defined to, to, um, to enable a better um, AMR compatibility. But we also do have um, yeah, adaptations like the LIF, the layout interchange format, that helps to synchronize, synchronize maps um, between the... Um, vehicle, the AGV or AMR, and the central fleet manager. I would keep it at that. Of course, there's way more to, to talk about here, but uh, I think we're just looking at the highlights. Yes, of course. And you know what was the most asked question? Of course, what are the biggest changes now with the version yeah, 3.0? of course. Um, so I think the biggest changes, and I'm again going to mention two things here, is the topic of trajectory-based um, navigation. So unlike the current 2.1 version, which is still featuring the base and horizon logic, where you have nodes and then edges connecting those nodes, and then when an AGV or AMR is driving, it gets the next node to node connection, so the next edge um, reserved. So unlike this concept, um, we now have a possibility to work with trajectories. Now, trajectory is basically something that you can describe as the planned path of a mobile robot. So in the version 3.0, the robot will report its trajectory to the central fleet manager. So it's basically going to have more freedom to, to define its path itself. And at the same time, it's going to provide this information to the central fleet manager that will still have a very good overview which way this 
mobile robot will go and will um, well have an even better chance to do a nice and easy traffic management here. Um, tra trajectories go together with something else which is new and that's going to be different zones that can be defined. So um, unlike the current um, node edge um, logic, there's going to be zones you can basically draw into your map and you can then assign properties to those zones, like this is a slowly drive zone, this is a um, drive right zone, and most important, this is a free navigation zone. So, to sum it up, the um, VDA 5050 version 3.0 will get way more AMR friendly. So, with the trajectory based navigation plus the zone concept, um, obstacle avoidance, so unexpected deviations from a certain route will be included into the VDA 5050 logic, um, will be, um, will be, yeah, will be defined in a way that the central fleet manager can still um, track those movements and can still also do traffic management in those situations. So that's a feature that is currently missing. Um, that is, uh, yeah, preventing AMRs in, 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 in many occasions to leverage their full potential, I would say. Okay. If I have a fleet of mobile robots already in place and running, yeah. using an older version, yeah. what will happen now? Can I just upgrade or do I have to buy a new mobile robot? <laughs> uh, it's something in between, I would say. <laughs> so you cannot just simply upgrade because it's not up to you. It's actually up to your current um, mobile robot vendor or provider. So he'll need to update the, the, the software of the robots to be compatible with version 3.0. So, you know, he'll need to be able to understand the zone concept. He'll be um, able to understand the trajectory um, base communication and so on. So all of that needs to be done by the mobile robots vendor. And at the same time, also your central fleet manager, if you have one, will also need to adopt certain changes to become or to reflect the changes that the version 3.0 is defining. And that means... Um I can do already something today as an end user. Should I contact my HV AMR supplier already now? Yes, yes, do that. Um, uh, if you have mobile robots, if you have a central fleet manager, go ahead and talk to your providers um, and uh, align with them on what their timeline is for introducing those, uh, those changes because um, you will be dependent on them and their speed of adaptation um, until you can use those new features. And there is another thing I recommend to do, and that's to also rethink your use cases. So with this new functions, there might be also new potentials for new use cases that you can automate. So please go back to your current scenario, check if there are still processes that are manual, because for example, you couldn't use obstacle avoidance in the, in the past and think on how you can, uh, you can go ahead with automation there because those features will be available. Thinking about the VDA strategy now, um, I mean, do I have to upgrade? Is it will be the 2.1 version like uh, outdated at uh, some point of time? Can I continue using it? Like what, what's the, the strategy overall? Or can I stay with the 2.1? Yeah, so many installations will certainly stay on uh, version 2.1, especially if those new features do not add any clear benefit uh, right from the start. Um, so I expect version 3.0 just, um, you know, slowly... Um, gaining traction in the market. So I assume that all new installations um, will be VDA 5050 version, version 3.0 um, when they are done. And of course, when the providers provide it. 
uh, and many old installations might remain on 2.1, just the way we today have still installations that run on version 1.0, right? Um, but in the end, it's uh, I, I think it's up to the it's up to you as a user to to judge that and to yeah to just um, to rate the benefits that you can take out of that and to to implement them by upgrading your mobile robots and your central fleet management version to VDA um, 3.0. Talking about uh, benefits, you mentioned some already. Now, as a sales guy, yeah, bring it down to three main benefits for end users. Why do I need the version 3.0 or even better? Um, what are my benefits when upgrading? I can give you just one well, okay. argument because I'm a good sales guy. <laughs> and my argument is if you want to use your AMRs with the full scope of functionalities with as less hustle as possible while adopting VDA 5050, then version 3.0 is a must. Cool. Very easy. Okay, and if I have the version 3.0, is it backward compatible? Is there such a thing in the VDA? Um, I would say partly. So obviously version 3.0 is featuring new functions. So let's say you have a central fleet manager that is already supporting the new version and you have an AGV provider, which is still featuring version 2.1, then of course they can work together. So there is no showstopper here, but the new features um, won't be available in this setup because both parties, so the mobile robot and the central fleet manager need to be on the same version to do or to allow the zone concept and to implement the trajectory based uh, navigation or pathfinding, I should say. Okay. I heard that like the internal version of this um, yeah, 3.0 is already uh, ready, um, but I think it's not yet published officially, right? Yes. So, well, we have these two working groups at the VDA and the VDMA. Um, they are currently in, well, deep discussions on the final version of uh, 3.0. So there is a lot of um, meetings, a lot of um, exchange going on at the moment. Um, by the way, there is a GitHub. You can, you can enter as an outsider to check out the topics that are discussed at the moment and you can contribute. So, um, so if, you, if you would like to take part in this, you can do that without being a member at VDA or VDMA, but that's just a site info. <laughs> um, coming back to your question, um, the current uh, forecast for the publishing, the published date uh, of version 3.0 is end of this year. Okay, so soon. Yeah, depends on uh, which timelines <laughs> you are using. If you if you have the China speed timeline, then, oh, yeah, uh, late, yeah. then that's very late. But uh, in European uh, uh, terms, that's um, that's just around the corner. That's true. Are we finished then with the VDA fifty fifty, or are there still ideas and developments? W will there be a version four dot well, that's a very good question. Um, that's something we can uh, <laughs> ask the working groups that are uh, deeper into the topic. But what I can tell you as a as a end user um, is that um, I still I will still miss functionalities uh, in uh, in this VDA standard. Um, and just to pinpoint one of them, um, the topic of uh, map synchronization is still somewhat unfinished from my point of view. So with the LIV, the layout interchange format, you are able to upload the maps from your AGVs or AMRs to the central fleet manager. So let's say you have three different fleets. From each fleet, you're going to get this map. And then the central fleet manager is synchronizing that. And you have the, the final map for everyone. But if you have any changes in your layout, 
so you're moving a source or a destination somewhere, you cannot simply do this in the central fleet manager. And then everything is like, you know, like uh, handed down to the, to the mobile robot uh, maps, which means you have to like do those changes in the mobile robot fleets. Uh, sorry, in the mobile robot uh, maps, and mm -hmm. then again upload it. And from my point of view, this is not very user friendly because um, I, I, I expect myself to only work in the central fleet management software. So I would like to do all the changes there and then see them being reflected automatically in the mobile robots map. Instead of going to each map, let's say I have provider A, I have to do the adaptations in this map, I have B, I have to do the adaptations in this map, and then C, another map, and then I have to upload it again, you yeah. know? So that's, that's somewhat of a workaround and I'm not totally happy with that. So let's see, but I hope that we're gonna find a solution for this in the VDA 5050 standard also in the future. Cool. Matthias, you almost survived all the <laughs> questions. I have only a very last one oh. for you. Very straightforward. Okay. Imagine you are the automation responsible yep. um, in a plant. Would you upgrade immediately? Yes or no? Yes. Perfect. <laughs> Matthias, thank you very much for this free masterclass about VDA 5050 version 3.0. And I hope you learned as much as me uh, during this lesson together with Matthias. So thank you for, for listening, for joining us and see you in two weeks for the next episode. Take care. Goodbye. This was another episode of the Automation Awakenings podcast. Visit us at automation-awakenings.com 